Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Major League Baseball coverage. I am Mega Ruler 31 and we're going to be looking at the 10 game slate for Monday 5-3. Lots of weather concerns tonight <clears throat> for the baseball game. Start with um, Philly and Milwaukee. Looks like a game's going to start off maybe a little bit wet with rain getting heavier throughout the game. Same thing with the Dodgers and the Cubs, although that one looks like it's not going to um, be as bad to begin, but should be just as heavy rain maybe midway through the game for that. So I'm not sure they're going to make it through that one completely. Uh, Mets and Cardinals, same story. Uh, rain starts out um, somewhere after the first pitch and gets heavy. They're only like a 60%, whereas the... Um, Cubs and Dodgers and uh, Phillies game is looking at 70 or 80 percent. Uh, maybe some light rain in Kansas City. That one looks a little bit better. Coors Field, um, the Giants and the Rockies, it's going to rain pretty much. It rained a lot of the day yesterday. It's, it's going to rain most of the morning up until around first pitch and then slow down to maybe like 25% or light rains. So potential post late start for that one possible postponement. So just have to keep an eye on that. The rest of the games, the weather looks um, decent. You got some strong winds at about 17, 18 miles per hour blowing out to right in Minnesota. And other than that, I think nothing too noteworthy. So uh, let's start with pitching. Um, I think my favorite pitcher is going to be Glass now. Uh, he comes up against the Angels. They don't strike out a ton and they've got a good lineup, but uh, he's has had a pretty good start to the season. So at 10 3, I think he is the best um, option without weather. Uh, Walker Bueller would probably be next at 9 6. Like I said, unfortunately, you'll have to check on the weather. It's such a juicy matchup against this Cubs team that had strikes out and that has struggled. So uh, if the weather looks clear or if it looks like, you know, they can get like five, six innings in without any issues and you can rack up the Ks and get um, efficiently through the lineup and the game's moving quickly, he could definitely be a good play. Uh, Maeda comes in at 7-8 against Texas. Who um, he, he struggled a little bit and um, recently, so his form isn't dynamic right now. But um, I think he's one that against a Texas team with a lot of keys in the lineup. Uh, if he can neutralize the few power bats that they have, um, could have a decent game. I think I really like uh, Frankie Montas, and I think he'll have like some low ownership. He has also struggled. A lot recently, um, people see him up against the Blue Jays team, might be a little bit scared off of that. But the park factor, he's back at home in Oakland. It's not as much as a hitting park as if they were in that um, Tampa Bay park where Toronto's been playing um, their home games recently because of uh, Canada um, and COVID travel restrictions. So, you know, he's one that I'd look at also. Um, Otani also is interesting he probably won't go that deep but um the rays do have a lot of strikeouts in the lineup he did get hit by a pitch um in the game on sunday so just be very careful for that uh nobody else really interests me a ton vince vasquez is a strikeout pitcher has had a few control issues he's up against a milwaukee team that's not the um the strongest, although some of their pieces might be starting to come back this week. So um, some potential there, but again, you have weather. Uh, you got a lot of bullpen games going. It looks like um, Seattle's going to be throwing a bullpen game out there. San Diego Lament might be starting. He's working his way back from an injury. If he isn't, um, or he might only go a couple innings and then it'd be a bullpen game, or like some sites have Diaz just as the starter if he can't do it. Uh, Dean Kramer is kind of interesting. I know he got roughed up by the Yankees. He really hasn't gone more than um, four innings, 
but he's uh, has a, some really good strikeout stuff. And he's up against a Seattle team that's, I think, fifth overall right now with strikeouts. So um, if you're trying to get some higher price bats in or, you know, you, you really want to use Glasnow or Bueller and, and get some, if um, the Rockies bats in, like, I think that's an option. And then finally, I would, um, if you're looking for a 4K pitcher that's actually not an opener, but a 4K pitcher, Daniel Lynch is uh, making his debut, I believe, against Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland is a really good offense, but they have struggled at times. They are only, I believe, in like 26 overall and weighted on base average and only like 19th in ISOs. So, um, the top of the lineup could be a little bit scary, but at 4K, if he gets three or four innings and gets some strikeouts and he's one that could potentially make value and open up a lot of other things for you. So bat wise, obviously we gotta look at Coors Field, it's completely ridiculous. Everybody's gonna stack San Francisco. They are pretty much free. This is re ridiculous pricing. It's almost like the algorithm did not know that they were in Coors Field. You have Mike Talkman who, I have been touting a lot. He was a really good hitter for the Yankees. They just didn't have a spot for him in his lineup. So they traded him to San Francisco because they risked losing him in the world five draft or he could have went to a, another team pretty much with no compensation. So um, Talkman, a left-hander against uh, Marquez here, 2K. If he's batting second, like you should just need to lock him in every single lineup. But look at the rest of this. Dickerson, a lefty at 3-5. Posey, um, I know he's like a little bit older now, but 4-8, uh, he's the most expensive one. And Brandon Belt, uh, the lefty here at 3-4. Um, this is definitely a lineup that you're probably going to want to use here. Uh, the Rockies are also um, a little bit more expensive, but um, in Coors Field. So obviously we're, we're going to like the bats at, at Coors. Um, I know Blackman struggled a little bit, but he's only at 3.7. Uh, they're not super priced up. The only ones that are up there are McMahon at 5-1 um, and Story at 5-6. So I think they'll definitely, if this game plays, have a lot of, of ownership there. Um, probably the next um, stack you would like is the Dodgers. Again, got to watch weather. Hendricks has been a good pitcher this year. Um, Lefty, Seager, Muncy, um, if I, Lux, and then I'm okay with, with the righties against them also. Uh, again, if the weather's good too, I like um, St. Louis against Lucchesi. They're a right-handed heavy lineup and, you know, Goldsmith, Arenado, um, they could really feast in the matchup there. Cleveland, you know, Daniel Lynch, like I said, 4K pitcher, um, could be a good value there, but also it is his, his first start and, um, you know, he, he's a young pitcher and you got some really good hitters like Ramirez and Lupo and um, Hernandez at the top of that lineup that could really do good. Uh, San Diego Padres going up against Tyler Anderson. He gives up a lot of hard contact. He is um, equal split wise. So lefties um, are good too. Grisham Hosmer and he probably won't go deep into the game. Their bullpen isn't um, the greatest. So the righty could come out there. And then finally, I think some other cheap pieces to look at would be Baltimore and Seattle. If that does turn into like a bullpen game, you've got um, especially Seattle bullpen isn't that great. And you've got some really good hitters in um, for potential power that are, are, are pretty cheaply priced in um, the Baltimore Oriole lineup. And then uh, finally, I would look at possibly the Brewers. They are very, very cheap also against Velasquez. Again, if the weather is okay there, um, Volgobach at, at 2.8, um, Shaw 3.5, Jackie Bradley Jr. at 2.8. Um, definitely some pieces to look at. The one game I would probably avoid would be Toronto and um, Oakland. I just think the pricing is too high there, and there's so many other opportunities on the slate to find better bats and better situations. So that wraps up Monday slate. Like I said, the two pitchers up top, Glasnow and Bueller. Uh, Bueller has the weather concerns. Kind of really like Montrose, even though he's going up against the, the Blue Jays. Um, you have a lot of bullpen 
games. Um, if you're looking for, um, you know, a, a sneaky cheap play, Daniel Lynch is worth the dart and GPPs open up some to maybe stack uh, the Rockies or some more expensive bats like Rockies and Padres. Um, again, the name of the game tonight is going to be checking the weather forecast and making decisions um, and having a plan B in case, you know, it looks like the game's going to play and then it's after lock, which course field will be. And then they decide, okay, they're going to postpone this game. Um, you know, what Padres can I um, pivot off of? And I think that's what you want to set up, play the Rockies. And then if the game looks like it's in trouble, make sure that you're paying attention to any breaking news and then just pivot off to um, the Padres and you should be good. So thanks again for watching. If you could give us a like, um, make some comments. Uh, if you want for more information, check us out on fsfdfs.com, MegaRuler31. You can catch me on Twitter at MegaRuler31. And thanks again for watching, and good luck on the slate.